So I began my uh, breast cancer journey um, eight years ago when I was 37 years old, before I was even eligible for a mammogram. Um, I found a lump by myself and called my um, gynecologist and I came in and had a mammogram uh, followed immediately by an ultrasound to a biopsy and found out that I had stage three cancer um, and it was very aggressive. So I did um, a bilateral mastectomy, eight rounds of chemo, 20 days of radiation and was put on tamoxifen, uh, declared cancer free. Fast forward two years later, which is now six years ago, um, a month before my 40th birthday, by pure accident, um, I was complaining about a uh, pain in my chest. Um, I found out that my breast cancer had spread to my liver and I was stage four metastatic, no cure. My husband and I were terrified when we walked into Dana Farber, but from the minute we stepped into the building, the valet, the front desk, the check-in nurses, the nurses who did my vitals, um, we were blown away at the compassion, the kindness, the caring for um, the patients. They just really went out of their way to make you feel special and not like a number and welcome. Um, and of course, once we met Dr. Weiner, we were even more blown away. Um, he, he's just a human being. He's so kind and caring and compassionate. He put us at ease that even though my cancer was very aggressive and um, yes, I did have a stage four diagnosis, but there are many women in the United States that um, live with this disease for many years. So I was um, on my eye branch for three and a half years. Um, I did really well, minimal side effects, lived my life normally, it's a pill, wonderful. Um, it, it went wonderful. Three and a half years later, we found out on scans that um, it had stopped working. And then I was put on Zolota another um, FDA approved medicine for cancer. And I survived on that for about a year and a half. I've been on two clinical trials at Dana-Farber um, and four FDA approved medicines. Um, unfortunately for me, both of the clinical trials that I was on at Dana-Farber have failed but that doesn't mean that they failed me, they haven't failed other patients. Um, and I'm hopeful that if this doesn't work, that I, there is another clinical trial I, um, that I'm, you know, I qualify for so that um, we can keep the research going. So. My message to the women on the executive council would be to try to raise awareness and funds as much as you can for Dana-Farber because I'm living proof. Um, years ago, a woman with my sentence would be dead within two years. I'm going on six years and I believe that every year there's more and more and I know it because my medical team tells me so and I see it and um, it's so important and it's so critical. So do everything you can do to, to get money and awareness because even if it's not you today, it can be your daughter, your niece, your granddaughter, your best friend, anybody, and it, it affects everybody. Cancer does not discriminate. That if people tell their story, I've had people say to me like, how do you do it? Like, how, how do you raise all this money? And I'm like, just tell your story. People want to give from people that are real. You know, they, they will give. And there's no other institution that I truly believe um, can do a better job with cancer research than Dana-Farber. I believe in it with my whole heart.